so here it is. This is the biggest game in the Lincoln Loco 3 yet. A Europa League final against Tottenham Hotspur. The winner takes the glory and a Champions League place as well. It's our ticket to the big time if we win this. Win this, things will never be the same again. Things will never ever be the same again if we win this game. Win it and we move to a whole new level in the Lincoln Loco 3. Lose it and well, quite frankly, I might cry um, and I'm sure you guys will cry with me. So hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're doing well. The season culminates here in the most dramatic game of the season. It means an awful lot to us as well. Obviously last episode, we missed out on that top four place in the league. We really wanted that top four place for a Champions League place, but obviously we missed out. So the only chance we've got now of stepping up to the big time is by beating Tottenham here today at Celtic Park, the neutral venue for today's fixture. Also, I hope you're all in your suits and ties as well. Obviously I'm dressed up for the occasion. It's a cup final, you've got to do it. I've got the red tie on, of course, for the red kits of Lincoln. We have been asked to do a team meeting ahead of today's game, uh, which I'm very nervous about, right? But I think it might be worth it. Ease the pressure on the players, tell them they're not expected to win. Just easing the pressure on them, I think should be okay. So we can go for, we are expected to win this final, but we're not, so let's not say that. Uh, you don't play in a cup final every day, embrace the occasion, come home with the trophy. I don't know if that's the right one to go for. Everyone's going to be hyping this game up because it's a cup final. Don't pay attention to that. Just another game as far as we're concerned. That is my go-to right now. Um, and I'm proud of you all for reaching the final. Um, if we win it, it we, you know, no worries, basically. That's what I want to say. I'm going to go for it's just like any other game. It's just like any other game. I'm going to say that to them. It's kind of it's kind of worked. There is green there, but not like the dark green, like, like Skander... Galena, Izquierdo and, and Tyson Brown are thrilled. They're very happy. Everyone else is kind of content. Um, yeah, let, let, let's say I agree with that. Let's say I agree with it. Morale has not really changed at all. Okay, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. There is some important team news, though, as we head into the game against Tottenham. Oh, my God. Dennis Lyon. Oh, this is quite important. Dennis Lyon's our physio. He is the best physio we've ever had. 20 physiotherapy. He's been here since 2021. He's been here nearly 10 years. Dennis, right, everyone, right now, I'd like to see you um, have a round of applause for Dennis Lyon. Round of applause. Of course, today's video is a YouTube premiere, so we are watching this together live, as it were. This is pre-recorded, obviously, but we are watching it together as if it was a live stream. So um, everyone in the chat... Say so you love to see it. Of course, if you're not watching this live with the chat, then this will make no sense to you at all. Of course, if you are watching this later on, this does get uploaded as a YouTube video as per normal after the premiere. Um, so maybe just type in the comment section down below, you love to see it, um, unless we lose, then that might not be the best thing to type. The big team news though, heading into this game against Tottenham Hotspur, are a couple of little injuries to some players, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, the good news is uh, we are allowed 12 substitutes for this game, right? And what that means, is that every single player in the first team can potentially have an impact in this game because no one's actually properly out of the game. The, uh, the small injuries, oh, this is exciting now, uh, are for Izquierdo and Tyson Brown. So ideally, they won't play because they're slightly injured, but um, everyone else can be on the bench. Like we've got a squad of 23 players, there's 23 spots available. So I think that's quite nice and poetic that everyone can potentially actually come on the pitch in today's game but only 11 players can start of course and this is the starting 11. Krenta starts in goal with a back line of Hannison, Eriksson and Araya. Stransky and Terziev start at the wing back positions with Scott Murphy and Catania through the middle. Adrisa Ferdinand is the advanced playmaker with Gisk and Sione just ahead of him. Between them now 74 goals this season. I'd love for Sione to score two more to get to 50 in total in all competitions this season and obviously break that 75 goal barrier for the strike partnership. But that's the team. That's the team. 90 minutes. That's all we've got. Let's leave it all on the field. So as kickoff is upon us here today, if you're watching this live in the premiere, I want your score predictions in the chat right now. I need to know what you're thinking. I need to know if you're backing me. Fingers crossed you are. As Tottenham 
kick off today's game with the first highlights and look to try and score the opening goal of this game. Now, we beat their rivals Arsenal twice. Offside. Offside. It missed anyway, but it was definitely offside. Uh, we beat Arsenal twice in the group stages. So, for me, I think we can do it again to another North London team. But, of course, this Tottenham side, to get to a final, must be very, very good and obviously better than Arsenal. Uh, they had to go through much more difficult teams than we did, I think, as well. So, if anything... They have proved themselves more than we've proved ourselves in the Europa League this season as <sighs> Tottenham go 1-0 up. All right, it's just a little lapse in concentration at the back, right? Just a little lapse in concentration. Benton Kerr's 4-4 four -four with the Chuck Woozy is good. Ah, oh, Krenter should have done better there. I think it goes through his legs, actually. I think it might glitch actually through his leg in terms of the you know the, 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 what's going on screen. But I think it did go through his legs. There's a highlight, though, straight from kickoff. Catania finds Sione. Sione finds Gisk. And immediately, we are back in this. Seconds. That's all it took. Seconds. And we're back in the game. You love to see it. Fantastic stuff. Let's watch this back again. Sione does brilliantly to get on the end of um, Catania's ball there. Beating the defender. And just popping it across the six-yard area. All Gisk had to do was tap it in the back of the net. Brill. Amazing work. 1-1. So one shot to both teams. Obviously, both keepers must be a little bit nervy because the one shot they've had to deal with, they've let in the back of the net thus far as uh, Catania. Come on then, into Ferdinand. If we can get another goal, it's Terziev in a great position. Terziev in the middle. It's in the back of the net. Is that our goal or is it an own goal? It's a Nahuan Perez own goal. I think if it didn't hit Nahuan Perez, it was going to hit one of our players instead. Let's watch this back, right? Catania to Ferdinand. Superb play, by the way, from Terziev to lose his marker like that. And a fantastic cross into the middle. Yeah, the clearance is just straight into Nihu and Perez. It's very unfortunate for Spurs to concede like that. Um, I know how they feel because I've had that scored against me several times. Note the streamer showdown recently. That happened a couple of times, actually. Straight from kickoff, we've won the ball back. Sione scores! You love to see it. We're 3-1 up. This is an absolute dream. Spurs, Spurs do not know how to deal with our crosses and they do not know how to deal with the ball from kickoff. That's twice we've scored seconds from kickoff and the third goal we've scored from Terziev putting up, well, actually, it was the, the third ball, we've, we've, ugh, I've lost it. It was going so well. It's the third goal we've scored from a cross from the right-hand side. The second cross that's come from Terziev putting that in the middle. He is superb as a left winger or as a left back, or as a right wing back. You love to see, he's such a great player. So many assists for him this season. Catanio, Terziev. Terziev, can he do it again? Sione, back to Terziev. Terziev, another cross. And it's going to be, oh, nearly another goal. Right, calm down, lads. Calm down. We need to concentrate and focus. Now, I think Catanio's taken a knock. It's telling me he's taken a knock and needs to come off the pitch. Okay. Let's assess this very quickly into the tactic screen. Injured but feels he can shake off the knock. Okay, let's give you 10 minutes, Catania, because you are superb, all right? We'll give you 10 minutes. Uh, let's go back to the team talk. Pump fists. And our outstretched arms, happy with how it's going. Keep it up. We're 45 minutes away from lifting some silverware here. 45 minutes away. Terziev, Catania. Catania, Ferdinand. Ferdinand finds Terziev in so much space again. He's so good at finding the space. Absolutely superb from him. My man of the match so far does lose it though. As soon as I give him a compliment, he loses it. And here comes Spurs. Oh, Ericsson with a big challenge there. I thought that could have been a foul. It's not a foul. We do lose possession though, but we have regrouped at the back. Offside. 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 Ref. Offside. <sighs> Thank goodness they did not score there. Okay, Spurs coming out the blocks very, very fast at the start of this second half. And oh my goodness, they've come very close from scoring from the corner as well. We need to be careful from this. Let's weather the storm for a little while. You love to see our back line on some good ratings as well. But that also means we must be doing some good defending, which means that obviously Tottenham are coming forward quite a lot. We need to nullify their attacks a little bit more. In the meantime, our strikers on some great ratings too. Everyone else looking relatively average as it stands right now. But we are winning and the time is in our favour as the clock starts to tick down and tick down. 30 minutes left to go in today's game as Ferdinand loses possession. Oh, if we concede another goal, right? It's Oh, if we score another goal though, 
If we score another goal, Sione, he gets that 50th goal of the season. That's it. Surely that's it. I'm known for my famous last words, right? I'm known for them. I've got to say, Spurs, they really mess things up at the back there. Um, big mistakes in the midfield, and then it just lets Sione through. Two of our goals have kind of been gifted to us, really. Kind of been gifted to us. But I can't see Spurs scoring four goals in... in oof. Okay, let's not talk too soon, right? Because that was very, very close. But I can't see them scoring four goals. I can't see it happening in 25 minutes. Surely not. As Stransky's corner is met by the head of Araya over the bar. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, just finish the game, please, boys. I'm just... Oh, we need to make some changes to, you know, keep the back line solidified. Keep them at field strong as well. We'll make some changes in a second as... Oh, come on. Come on. Benson Kerr on the ball for Spurs. They look to come. They've been the better side. I genuinely think Spurs, especially in the second, maybe not the first half, but in the second half, they have been the better side. We've seen so many attacks and so many times. I said Terziev was my man of the match. He was my man of the match in the first half, my second half man of the match, and we're only, what, 25 minutes into the second half. Is honestly Krenta. Krenta has been incredible in this second half. And with 15 minutes to go. Scott Murphy, not the best of games for him, but he's he's put out a shift, all right? He's put out a shift. Let's bring Tyson. He's slightly injured, but I'd love to see Tyson Brown on the pitch for this one. Um, Ericsson, we're going to bring him off for Lukau. He's not quite fit, but I'd love to see Lukau on the pitch at the end as well. And actually, yeah, Paolo Turner, you come on for Catania. It's a very makeshift midfield a little bit, um, but I, I want to see Paolo Turner and Lukau on the pitch um, to win this because they've been here for a long time as, uh, as regens, as Patreon players. I want to see them do well. And so with, what, 10 minutes to go, Spurs, look at the shots, 14 to 8. They have been the better team here today, but we're the ones that have scored the goals. And as the clock ticks down, we've done it. We've won the Europa League. I cannot believe how insane we have been in the Europa League this season. Like, we were good in the league, right? But the Europa League, we were on a completely different level. Like, we won a game 10-0 in the group stage. We absolutely battered, um, who was it? Bruce Munch and Gladbach, 7-3 in one game. You know, it was a bit closer in, on aggregate in the end, 7-5 on aggregate. We battered them. We beat Arsenal twice. In the group stage, that was a... I'm so happy. I can't believe we've done this. That is the icing on the cake. And not only have we won the Europa League, right? It also gives us a Champions League place as well for next season. This is taking us to the absolute next level now. The absolute next level. Seven and a half million pound for winning that. That is absolutely huge. Uh, I can't believe we've won the Europa League. This is mental, right? Absolutely mental. Medals for these players. Congratulations, boys. I mean, for someone like Tyson Brown, 16 years old, to win the Europa League is huge. Um, I've brought glory to the club. You love to see it. They're happy with that Europa League win. Uh, fitness concerns for a few players. That's fine. Take the summer off, boys. Take the summer off. Don't do anything at all. As Sione's two goals gives him 50 for the season. That's remarkable. And we've been given £8 million for Europa League TV money and uh, £1.5 million for coefficient ranking pool money as well. So loads of money for that. Qualify for the Champions League. Now that's what we want to see. Champions League next season. Beautiful. We missed out on it in the league, but to win it by the Europa League is lovely. The initial budgets then. How big do you think it's going to be? Now this past season... We had £450,000 in wages. I can't remember what the transfer budget was. I think it was initially around £20 million or so. And then we sold players, bought some players and stuff like that. Initial budgets for next season are going to be £550,000 per week. So an extra £100,000 per week in wages and £20 million to spend. But we do have now in the bank £51 million. So hmm, give us some more, lads. Come on, give me some more. Can we make a board request for a new stadium? Let's do it again. I think we deserve a new stadium now. It might be named after me, which would be quite exciting. Uh, they'll let me know very shortly about a new stadium. As ugh, 
we won the Europa League. We are the biggest overachievers. I can kind of understand that, to be fair. Um, I don't think... Even we didn't expect this, obviously. We knew Europa League was good, but we thought we might get to the later stage and then, you know, fall out. I, I, I'm really surprised we won it, if I'm honest with you. Um, there was a lot of bravado saying we're going to win this, but I never really thought for a moment we're actually going to be in a chance of winning it. Uh, the board saying no to a new stadium again. Uh, frustrating. Um, come on. Bigger capacity... They still say no. Um, it's important. Come on, I'm going to try and convince them. Please, it's not worked. And I'm not going to threaten my job position either, so no new stadium. In terms of the team this season, though, I mean, they have been incredible, right? 50 goals for Sione in all competitions. 27 for Gisk in all competitions. Gisk is like a proper, not a league, 16 goals in the league, right? But 27 overall. So loads of goals in the league. That's 27 goals, by the way, if I just move myself, from uh, 30 appearances. That is huge. Massive. Sione has got 50 goals in all competitions and 53 appearances. So big, big stuff from those two. Paolo Turner chipped in with 13, though. David Perez. We've got to give him a contract. He's only played 21 games this season, and yet he's got 10 goals and 14 assists. We've got to do it. Give him a contract, right? We've got to do it. I don't care how big it's going to be. We need David Perez. He's proved to us that he should be here. He wants Chittagel to put the, board, the, the offer on the table, um, so let's do that and just suggest terms. He wants £46,000 a week. This is where I'm starting to think, oh, we can't really pay £46,000 a week for David Perez because that is huge, right? But we've got Champions League football now. So let's bring it down to 40. 46 million pound release fee clause, that's fine. I think we kind of give him what he wants. I know selling potential fee isn't great. And appearance, it's a very high, con it's a huge contract, right? But I think we've got to try and keep him at the club after that season. After all, but there we go. We'll finalise it. It's not the greatest contract in the world, right? He'll be the biggest earner at the club now for a player who hmm, isn't going to be our first choice, if I'm honest with you. He's, we're paying him 10 times what we're paying him right now, which is a bit frustrating. But four seasons in a row he's been here. He's been superb. The league, maybe not quite great this season. Hang on. 31 appearances. but Oh, because he's made loads of substitute appearances. So 21 starts, 20 substitute appearances. He has been fantastic, to be fair. So I think he deserves it. Maybe I'm being a bit generous because we have just won a Champions League, right? I'm being very generous with what I'm giving out to players right now I, but fair enough looking at assists he does actually top the assist chart so he's very valuable to how we create goals uh, Terziev with seven or 13 assists sorry Sione with 12 on top of his 50 goals Adris with 11 assists Gisk with 11 uh, Paolo Turner with nine Stransky with seven Scott M goals and assists come from so many different places in this team the thing is though we are going to have to say goodbye to some players right some players just aren't good enough anymore. I'm kind of looking at Hannison, which is very sad. I'm looking at Martin Ramos. I'm looking at Pascal. I'm looking at... I'm looking at Skander, actually. For all the money that we spent on him this season, he's come back with a 6.97, three goals, four assists. He's actually not been brilliant, Skander, this season. So... Maybe we look to move him on as well. Also, maybe looking at Andre Stransky. We keep him at the team, obviously, because he's got that fantastic perfectionist uh, personality for tutoring. But we need a better wing-back, definitely. Uh, we need a wing-back on the right-hand side, because Terziev is going to be our left winger. Although, if we use wing-backs, he can play there, can't he? I guess that's all right. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, a lot of players are going to go, I think, for hopefully big money. And we're going to bring lots of players in as well. So that finishes off today's episode. Fingers crossed we have a great summer and we can really do something special in the Champions League next season. Thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, make sure you do drop a like on today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.